the lesson and the content into a fan to use the photos our teacher has us do, he skips the lesson and makes us present a visual LEQ. LEQ means historical evidence, reasoning that can corroborate in advance. Complex thesis that Dr. John P. Irish would admire. Then we drop this screencast like a single that is fired. Student create screencast for you to like, subscribe, and share. We know you've all had the John Green and Steve Heimler you there. We have the most views by 10 p.m. Eastern on the fifth day. We earn 500 bonus points, which virtually guarantees an end without much more, much more than there are due. We present, we present our digital LEQ. Dudes and Dudettes, this is the similarities and differences in imperialism in Africa and East Asia by me, James Dawkins, Brendan Ellaby, and Savannah Minor. Let's get into it. Between 1750 and 1900, the Industrial Revolution brought upon the new age of European imperialism. This imperialism had a similar effect in Africa and East Asia in terms of defending their homeland from foreigners. However, since Africa was largely unexplored before this time, different European countries were in a scramble to colonize Africa, unlike East Asia. Therefore, the process of European imperialism within Africa and East Asia varied drastically from the inside, but had a few similarities in the broader picture. Big idea questions. Why did the European powers believe that it was their duty to imperialize and colonize African countries? How did Sir Frederick Lugar attempt to justify the imperialism of Africa? What was the negative effect of European imperialism in China? Source number one, The Black Man's Burden by E.B. Morrell. His quote says, in those regions, man is engaged in a perpetual struggle against diseased and exhausted climate, which tells heavily upon childbearing, and there is no scientific machinery for solving the weaker members of the community. The African of the tropics is capable of tremendous physical labors, but he cannot accommodate himself to the European system of mon monotonous, uninterrupted labor with his long and regular hours. When the system is forced upon him, the tropical African drop droops and dies. More Edwin Edmund Morel knew that the white man's burden was only justification for the Europeans' imperialist, imperialist ways. The Europeans believed that their imperialization of other countries was a way of carrying out their responsibility to civilize non-European societies. In his writing, Moreau points out that their imperialization and target of Africa wasn't actually helping African peoples but causing their suffering. Edmund Morel was a British French journalist, pacifist, and a participant in anti war and post war activism. He is a credible source because he believed that war and violence were indefensible and unacceptable. His black man's burden ultimately gave a voice to the suffering and tragedies that African Americans face because of the European peoples and discredited Kipling's claim that it was the white man's duty to sophisticate non-European peoples because they didn't have culture or civilization. Source number two, Opium in China. The photo depicts the struggles and hardships that the people of China went through during the Opium Wars. Many people struggled with their addiction to the drug after Britain unleashed a flood of opium under their free trade policy. At the end of the 1800s, out of 300 million citizens of China, 90 million were addicted. The people in the photo are Chinese smokers, smokers in an opium den. Source number three, Justification of Imperialism in Africa by Sir Frederick Lugard. His quote says, it is sufficient to reiterate here that as long as our policy is one of free trade, we are compelled to seek new markets for old ones are being closed to us by hostile tariffs and our great dependencies, which formerly were the consumers of our goods, are now becoming our commercial rivals. It is inherent in a great colonial and commercial empire like ours that we go forward or go backward. To allow other nations to develop new fields and refuse to do so ourselves is to go backward 
and that is more deplorable seeing that we have proved ourselves notably capable of dealing with native races and developing new countries at a less, less expense than other nations. We owe to the instincts of colonial expansion of our ancestors those vast and notable dependencies which are our pride and the outlets of our trade today. And we are accountable to posterity and opportunities which now present themselves of extending the sphere of our industrial enterprise are not neglected, for the opportunities now offered will never recur again. The British Empire often attempted to justify their imperialization of both Africa and parts of Asia, and this is exactly what Sir Frederick Lugard did when he gave his idea that the reason they needed to imperialize other countries was because it was important for them to provide for the growing population. Many Europeans didn't see the problem with their imperialist ways because they believed that the reason they were in power was because they were naturally superior in their abilities to survive. Sir Frederick Lugard was a British soldier, mercenary, former governor of the Hong Kong, and the first governor general of Nigeria. Because he has an authoritarian role, his audience is most likely to believe what he says concerning his rationale for Britain's expansionism of the continent of Africa. Big Ideas Review why did the European powers believe that it was their duty to imperialize and colonize African countries? How did Sir Frederick Lugard attempt to justify the imperialism of Africa? What was the negative effect of European imperialism in China? Answers. Number one. They saw it as a way of education and conforming non-European peoples to their Christian views and to give them culture and civilization. Number two, he claimed that it was a way to provide for the continually growing population and that they had to follow the ways of their ancestors. Number three, the opium wars. 30% of the Chinese population was addicted to opium. Our sources.